Yo, what's going on Gooners and Goonerettes? Welcome back to the channel. If you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and thank you guys for all of your amazing support. Let's talk about Basuma. Now, Basuma has dropped a massive hint that he wants to move to Arsenal this season. As a result of this, Arsenal fans are just going crazy and losing their freaking minds. His latest Instagram story pretty much says it all. Now, Basuma has openly shared posts calling for him to move to the Emirates, and that is on his own profile. Basuma reposted a short clip of one of his own performances during the African Nations qualifier against Congo earlier this week. But alongside the caption posted by the original uploader, it read, For me, I think that Basuma and Yori Tillemans should be our priority in the midfield. We must get Yves Basuma at all costs. And then hashtag Arsenal. Now I'm sure this didn't go down well with Brighton fans. He's been the cog of their midfield machine for years now. And now he's making moves towards the Gunners. The good news is he too has a year left on his deal. Which means he'll be available for the same kind of money as Tielemans. Around 25 million, 30 million euros. If the Gunners are going to make a serious move for Basuma, they'd better jump on it now because with this kind of news that he wants out, other teams are going to start knocking the door. And we're talking about teams around Europe, plus Newcastle as well, and Chelsea. Don't forget, guys, Chelsea need to find the replacement for Kante, another player who we missed out on. Aston Villa have been reported as a team that has been following the player for quite a long time. Monaco also have identified Basuma as a potential target to replace their own stars. So it's going to be down to us and timing. Arsenal fans are used to having gone through the whole summer, not made a buy, and then in the last couple of days, a pref letter players just walk through the door, and by that time the season's already started and you've already played two or three games. Never have we really seen before a summer where we've gone out, Alex Ferguson style, and done our business in the first couple of weeks, and then integrate those guys into the pre-season plan, the fitness regime, the team, bonding with their players, and then ready for week one. We haven't really done that. So can we now please, Mr. Edu and Arteta, get a team ready for pre-season so that we can kind of build it from the get-go and build that foundation? Now, there's a lot of talk, guys, with Gianluca Scamacca. 23 years old, PSG held some talks with Scamacca reps today, Arsenal, they like the player, but there is nothing really concrete going on from what we know. Plus, he's in the lower tier of strikers, in my opinion, from Gabriel Jesus, who I'd say is top tier right now. Um, he's Look, he scores a lot of goals from the outside, Skamaka. He's got a great right foot. He's average on the ball, not great defensively. So there's ways how I guess you can kind of bring him in and kind of sort of develop the player as a 23-year-old. But by no means is this guy going to be the money that they're going to be asking for him. And that's kind of where I start to draw the line. Good news on William Saliba. He's made his stance that he wants to come back to Arsenal. And his words are, I belong to Arsenal. I still have two years left. I will be back with Arsenal. I've played zero matches and I still want to show them my true face. I have the chance to play for these fans. This is a great club but it doesn't depend on me. So when he says it doesn't depend on me, that's realistically down to the front office and the manager. They are the ones that are going to have to show the love, which they've never really showed the player before over the last two years. And look, man, I know he was probably promised a lot of things from the people who brought him in here, which was Raul Sinelli and Sev Mislintat, but the new set of managers that he's had around has not really kind of integrated him. They've gone out and bought their own centre-backs in Ben White and Gabriel. So I really do kind of agree with William Saliba. He's looked like, I'm here. You guys can see what I can do now. So now play me. Let me show you what I can do. And Arteta's always put players in the team that have done a job for him, regardless of how much games are played or whether he likes them or not. He's always kind of favoured, and we know that from Niketia, we know that from El Nene, we've known that from quite a few players now, that he will play you if you'll do a job for him. But um, I think with William Saliba, I think it's time, guys. I think it's time. It's time for him to show and prove. It's time for him to shine. 
And so I'm looking forward for him. I'm really excited, actually, to see if we can get that deal sorted and maybe sign an extension. I talked about him the other day, so don't go crazy, everybody. But I'm saying that they're willing to make a move for him if all else fails. So we're starting to hear talk. You guys have heard it. Spanish teams have come in for Gabriel Jesus now. There's still a lot of Arsenal fans saying, why Gabriel Jesus? Gabriel Jesus is top tier, guys. Yeah, Gabriel Jesus has played for the best team in England for years. And he started over the likes of Merez, uh, Sterling and all them guys. And his numbers, as I showed to you the other day, are better than Aguero's. So make no mistake about it, yeah? He's 25 years old. Gabriel Jesus is ready to break out. He's ready to have a breakout season and all the signs are there. But with guys like Richarlison, again, second tier in my opinion. Richarlison does say though, when he talks about leaving Everton, he's kind of like, because of the history he's felt there and the affection to the fans, when he talks about leaving, he's a little bit speechless. But I think for that, I really don't know guys. I'm still not a fan of it. But what it does show you guys is this is that when Arsenal are going after top-tier players who want to play in the Champions League, the availability of those players isn't going to be what you think it is. I know as Arsenal fans, we always think the best of our team, but there's guys out there that, especially in their prime 25-26, that have a last chance to play for a contract for a team in the Champions League. So Arsenal doesn't look as lucrative. And I think when you look at the, some of the names that have been thrown around, you have to understand that you know, that's the ballpark. If you're going to be playing in the Europa League, it's not going to be appealing to some of those top players. Say if Gabriel Jesus comes out, I know his agents have said, look, they really like the plan at Arsenal and they really like the fact that he's worked with Arteta before. But say if he wakes up one day and says, you know what, I'd rather go and play for Real Madrid or Barcelona. Then you're kind of, you're kind of on the back foot there and you're going to have to have a plan B. Remember when we went for Vavic? And Alexander Isak in January, and that didn't work out. Arsenal kind of really never had a plan B. So I think you have to have a plan in order to go through to the next season and to make sure that you losing out on the striker doesn't happen again. But I have to say that Man City have come out today. You know there's been a lot of talk for Bakayo Saka. Even Theo Walcott came out today and sent Saka a message and said, if you go to a big team, you ain't going to play every week. And I think a lot of people know that with Saka... He's a big fish in a small pond at Arsenal. If he goes to a title-winning team like Manchester City, he'll be a small fish in a big pond. And then he won't be as favoured by the fans. He won't play as much games. But Manchester City came out today and distanced themselves from the reports that they are considering a move for Bukayo Saka. So take that as you will, guys. But um, for me, Saka loves Arsenal. He's always talked about that in his interviews and reports. And when he did sign a contract, he said how much he loves this team. So it's just an extension. If we can get Saliba and Saka to sign long-term deals, then I think that we're set. I really do. So guys, Arsenal's pre-season, it starts very soon in a month's time where the first team will take on FC Nuremberg as part of their pre-season training at the Adidas headquarters in Germany. The match is going to be at the 50,000 capacity Max Morlock Stadium on Friday the 8th of July. That's a 4.30 kickoff. Tickets for that fixture will be purchased from the Nuremberg website from 11 a.m. on Monday, June the 20th, and also on Arsenal's uh, website as well. But our pre-season schedule also sees the return of the Emirates Cup. So everything is moving as a plan. Everything's moving towards pre-season now, as I said, there's less than a month left now as they don't get much of a break. And then it's football back again. So we'll be able to pick it up from there. But I'll catch up with you guys on the next transfer update. Peace out, guys. Speak to you soon, man.